And welcome back. I'm Peter Millard, and in this final episode of the Track Saw Workshop, I'm talking about tool improvements and tool maintenance. That's coming up next. So we've got our saw up and running. If you've seen the previous uh, episodes, anyway, previous parts, uh, we should be all pretty comfortable with the way our saw is working, the way it's running now. Um, I just want to do a, a quick video about routine maintenance and maybe a couple of improvements you can make. Uh, possibly a couple of other accessories that you might want to get. Um, uh, with regard to maintenance, the saws themselves are pretty much sealed units. There's not a lot you can do. There's not a great deal to get into there. Uh, you might have seen the, the video from last year where m my oldest Festool saw died suddenly. I bought another one. I found the old one again and pulled it apart and inside all the electronics are completely sealed. They're all sort of epoxied in on indiv individual boards. You can't get to the individual components at all. Uh, and I would imagine uh, that inside this, it, it is much the same. Uh, so no real sort of access uh, to any of the individual components apart from brushes. Uh, and in fact, it was brushes hilariously that caused my original saw to fail. Uh, 11 years on a set of brushes, that's not bad going. Uh, so over time you will need to replace the brushes. I'm not going to go into how to do it because every saw will be slightly different. Uh, I refer to the user manual for that. Some of them come with brushes uh, as spares. This one didn't. Uh, the old Titan, the yeah, alternative cheap track saw, did. Um, the other thing you might want to do uh, is just generally, if obviously, <laughs> Don't drop it and keep it dry. Uh, other than that, uh, give it a, a quick hoover over now and then. Just go over it with a vacuum just to clear all the dust out as much as possible. Uh, and try and keep the dust port completely clear as well. If you've been ripping a lot of natural timber, you get that sort of fine swarf that comes off the bottom of a cut and can clog up the insides here. The inside dust path is pretty compact in these tours. So they can get sort of clogged up pretty easily. Uh, again, one of mine, I was doing just that, ripping a lot of natural timber, and it wasn't sort of sucking very well. So I took the side cover off, and it was absolutely jam-packed in there. Really, really horrible. Uh, again, they all vary a little bit with, with this particular one. It's a Phillips or Posi screwdriver uh, on the screws on the side here, and this side cover just pops off. If you've got a sprung riving knife, as this one does and as a Festool does, uh, be a little bit cautious about it. Just take the side cover off and clean out what you need because you don't want any of those internal bits going sproying and flying about everywhere. Other than that, uh, the only other sort of routine maintenance that I do on the saws is actually on the underside. Um, I don't like using WD-40 on saws because it's potentially a little bit greasy and that could be transferred to work pieces. But what I do do Amusingly, this is a WD-40, but it's a silicon spray. So a little blast of silicon spray, and just rubbed into the just the groove. That's usually enough to keep things sliding quite nicely. We'll do the same on the tracks a little bit later on as well. Uh, but other than that, no, you know, keep it clean and dry. Uh, and there's no real big issue uh, with the saws themselves, I've found anyway. Uh, and obviously uh, this particular saw comes with a three-year warranty. If you have, have any major snags, just chuck it back to the, to the dealer, chuck it back to the people you bought it from. Uh, with regards to maintenance on the rails, again, similar kind of thing really. Uh, keep them clean, keep them dry where you can. Uh, and again, just give them a wipe over with silicon spray just in the trough on that rubbing strip and again just over the rib on here and again just on these little glide strips and that'll keep your saw running Nice and smooth. So staying with the guide rails for now, one of the things you'll have to do is to replace the splinter guards. Uh, these do wear out. Uh, obviously you've got a blade 
bearing against that with every cut that will wear away and eventually your splinter guard won't be on your cut line anymore. A good tip actually is to just, these are just held on with double sided tape, and a good tip is just to peel them off and move them over a little bit. You can do that a couple of times before you actually need to replace them. Uh, they're just, as I said, they're just double sided, uh, held on with double sided and just warm the rail up a little bit with a hairdryer ideally or maybe a hot air gun. If you're going to use a hot air gun, use it very carefully because obviously you don't want to burn the, uh, the low friction strips or melt the rubber. Uh, that's just enough to loosen up the adhesive uh, and I'll actually change this one now just so you can see the process that's involved. Now I've said before I like the Makita replacement splinter guards. They're cheap and they're widely available. Six or seven pounds will get you three meters. So you're enough to do uh, four, the, yeah, four of these rails. So I'm just going to peel this off. It's been warmed up already. And that's actually come off extremely cleanly. They don't know if they normally leave some kind of residue behind. So that's the old one, which we don't need. And on the underside of the rail here, there's a little rib that you can see the splinter guard just sort of settles against that naturally and gives the right sort of overhang for you to trim back afterwards. And there we are with the guard rail split the guard changed we can trim that back in the usual way on a spoiler board so when it comes to accessories for your guard rails uh, the obvious one that I've resisted for a long long time is the rail bag uh, I resisted this simply because they were about the same price or more than a rail uh, which didn't make any economical sense to me whatsoever. If you ding your rail while you're out on a job or just buy a new one, it's cheaper than the bag to put it in. But what they do do, of course, is keep everything together. You can have a couple of rails in here, get your levels in there as well. But also they almost all come with a little side pocket so you can keep accessories in there. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a second, like clamps and things. Uh, obviously the price has come down now. The original rail bags were from Festool or DeWalt. Uh, and they were, as I say, about the same price as a length of rail, whereas you can pick up these generic kind of things off eBay for 15 or 20 pounds. Now I think I paid about 20 quid for this particular one. And guess what? It does exactly the same job as my Festool one. So let's stay with the guide rail accessories for a minute. Um, you're going to need a set of clamps. You're going to need to clamp the rail down at some point. Uh, I rely on the, the grippy strip underneath the festival rails uh, for the ma vast majority of what I do but most of the time I'm just cutting simple cuts in MDF. Anytime you do anything tricky or anytime you do a bevel cut uh, you must clamp the rails down uh, and a simple cheap set of screw clamps is really all you need. Largely to the best of my knowledge they are pretty universal so any set of uh, rail clamps that fit the Festool or Makita rails will fit all the others. Uh, the Festool screw clamps are about uh, they were, it used to be about 25 quid a pair, I don't know what they are now. Uh, Makita do, again, particularly good range of uh, accessories. Uh, at the low end you can get their, uh, a pair of clamps for about 15, 20 pounds, something like that, which is good value. Uh, uh, there are a variety of quick clamps as well. I have the Festal ones, these are eye-wateringly expensive. Um, I think they were close to £50 per clamp, which is ridiculous. However, if you are clamping and unclamping a lot, they do save you a lot of time. Uh, and you can, if you keep an eye on eBay, uh, excuse me, if you keep an eye on Amazon, they occasionally come up as specials on there. You can get a bit of a deal. I also bought these. These are Axminster Forge Trade Clamps, I think they call them. Oh, there we are. They've got a few niggles with them, but I bought these because they were literally half the price 
of the Festool clamps. You could literally get a pair of these for one Festool clamp. Uh, and then Axminster went and fixed the niggles, but put, put the price up so close to the Festool as it's almost not worth bothering with them now, I don't think, uh, considering the difference in cost. They're, 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 they're so close in price. Uh, again, check the current prices. I might be able to flash that up on screen. Uh, and they may have changed, but for the same size, they're very close in, in actual price. So when it comes to making improvements to the saw, there's not a great deal you can do, to be honest. As we've said before, it's kind of a sealed unit, and other than keeping it clean and making sure there's no debris around it, there isn't a huge amount to be done with it. Uh, we'll change the blades. We'll do that a little bit later on, or, or next, as we call it. Uh, the one thing we can do, though, is to actually improve the dust collection on it. And it's really, really easy and really simple to do. Uh, Maffel saws have typically slightly better dust collection even than uh, and dust extraction even than the Festool. And the reason for that is they have a completely enclosed side plate to the saw. Uh, obviously, uh, with these saws and with the Festool as well, you need to plunge the saw to get to the retaining screw to change the blade. Uh, the truth is though, I don't change the blades very often. In fact, I've changed blades more for this filming of this series than I have probably in the last 12 months or probably two years, to be honest. Um, uh, all you've got to do is just put a piece of tape over this window. And we'll do that now. It is so trivial and so simple to do. It doesn't get in the way of any of the accessories. It just seals that up. And that will almost always improve the dust collection, regardless of what saw you've got. It, it does on my Festools, and they have you know, arguably some of the best dust collection, dust extraction. So yeah, just covering that hole makes a difference. Um, the only other thing we can do really to the saws is to change the blades. And we change the blade, the, as I said, in part three. Uh, most of these entry-level saws come with a sort of stock 24 tooth blade. So a general purpose, a bit coarse for doing any sort of finer work. Uh, and there are plenty of 48 tooth blades to choose from. So I thought we'd just go compare a few very quickly just at the end here. I'm just going to make a simple cross and rip cut in some birch ply. So we'll see what the cut is like under the splinter guard and out. And I've got uh, the Trend blade, which Trend supplied to me. Thank you very much to Trend for that. I'm going to pull, I don't actually have a spare, so I'm going to pull the Festool blade out of one of my saws. It won't be a completely fair test because it's a used blade. Uh, we've got an Axminster Axe Calibre Cut Pro. Uh, which is actually a 40 tooth blade, but it's an uh, uh, alternative bevel. Um, supposed to be very good. And we've got the key blades and fixings, uh, standard 48 tooth uh, by 160. Uh, these guys. Okay, so we've got our cross cut jig in place. Uh, uh, the jig you might remember was designed to have 18 mil thick uh, fences. And I'm using 12 mil birch ply because that's what I've got. So I'm putting a 6 mil spoiler board in there. Uh, we've got Birch ply, uh, a couple of pieces that will fit in at the same time. So we've got effectively a rip cut with the grain, and we've got a cross cut across the grain. Nothing clever, nothing fancy. We're just going to make a single cut with each blade. I won't make you sit through the blade changes, and we'll see how they look. And hearing protection, must have hearing protection. So a fairly sort of typical couple of cuts uh, with the grain and across the grain uh, and typically with the splinter guard and the waste side cut as well. Uh, and these are all with the same saw and the same rail. All we've done is change the blades. Um, we've got basically all the uh, with the grain, the rip cuts are absolutely fine. There's, there's no, almost no difference between any of those. Uh, when it comes to the cross cutting, uh, again, the vast majority of uh, splinter guard cuts are absolutely fine. Uh, I'd, I'd say the... Sorry, I'm going to just pop that one around. Yeah, I mean, of them all, probably the Festool and the Keyblades uh, are, are the best. 
there's very slight furring on the Axminster one uh, and the same on the um, Trend one. Uh, on the waist side though, it's a bit, I'm sorry, I'm swapping these around because I, I was trying to avoid the painted side. On the waist side, there's quite a lot of splintering on the Trend. Uh, and the same with the Axminster, it's not bad, but it's definitely there on the key blades and the Festool. And bear in mind that Festool's already done a few miles. It's not a, it's not a, a new blade by any stretch of the imagination. It's incredibly clean on the waist side. Uh, again, can't emphasize this enough. Same saw, same track. All we've done is change the blade. The depth's the same. Everything's the same, same extraction. All we do is change the blade and make the cut. Uh, uh, and that cut, a waist side cut like that, for what is an old blade is is pretty impressive I've got to say uh, uh, yeah that is why festival blades are 50 quid uh, and the others are in the in the 20s I would imagine uh, uh, between the others I'd say that the key blades and fixings is really good uh, as close to the festival as you're likely to get got an odd little step in that I don't know why um, curious maybe the the timber shifted slightly uh, but in terms of the actual cut uh, absolutely terrific um, so yeah uh, I don't mean anything by this it's just purely out of interest uh, to see what alternatives you could get uh, to improve the quality of cut uh, from your cheap Aldi Traxel and I'm gonna leave it there I think uh, that's enough there's not much more to say about Traxels or the Traxel workshop uh, I'm not anti table saw I just think that Traxels are a better option for most people especially if you're a beginner and especially if you're working out of a small space um, I hope you've enjoyed the series I've certainly enjoyed making it uh, before you go can I just remind you that the best way not to miss one of my videos is to subscribe to the channel and if you do subscribe don't forget to hit that bell then you'll be notified whenever I put up something new or whenever YouTube decides to do it because to be perfectly honest it's a little bit flaky uh, uh, please do take a minute to check out the description box below the video uh, there's all kinds of handy dandy links to all manner of useful little bits and pieces including the stuff I use in this video as well as links to the stuff I use page on the 10minuteworkshop.com companion website that has links to everything that I've used in all the videos ever uh, kept up to date as best as I can. Now, if you've found this series useful, and especially if it's saved you a free quid, perhaps by buying a cheaper track saw than you might have been considering, uh, you might want to think about supporting the channel. Uh, what do you know? There's a link down in the video description below on how to become a Patreon supporter. I want to take a second to thank all of my Patreon supporters whose regular contributions really helps to keep the lights on here and helps an awful lot when it comes to buying these tools that I use in the reviews and longer series. And if you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, well, that's totally fine. There's also a link down in the video description where you can make a one-off or recurring PayPal donation. I want to thank everybody who's done just that. Um, if you're into social media, give me a follow on Instagram. I used to be a photographer, so I take a decent snap. And I also post short form videos and trailers there for my YouTube uh, uh, videos uh, as I'm trying to build up this sort of Instagram side of things. Don't forget, uh, this is not a review of the Aldi work zone track saw. That will be coming in a future video, uh, but that's for a future video. That's it for this video uh, and for this series. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time in the 10 minute workshop. Take care.